Hi, I'm Sandal and welcome to my channel where we talk about the wonders of nature and their benefits, healthy hair, skin, nails, gut health, and so much more. In today's video, we are going to be talking about hormonal acne and cerberic dermatitis. So if you're a person who suffers from either one of these two conditions, make sure you stick around to the end of this video because by the time this video goes off, not only will you know the causes leading up to the condition, but you will know how to treat it effectively with either over-the-counter medication or with a herbal complex that you can take right at home. So make sure you keep on watching, stick around to the end, and leave me some comments below if you're a person who requested this video. I tried to make it pop up on the screen, but I couldn't find none of my screenshots. Mascara got smeared under my eye, but I'm not re-recording. Did to you it. know that around 30% of adult women have hormonal acne now when it comes to hormonal acne my baby this is something for a biological women around a certain time of the month you may notice that your skin flares up and your acne is worse than it's ever been my love most likely you are a person who's dealing with hormonal acne and this is why it's often more cystic which is like around the lower jawline the chin and the chin the mouth area forming like a U shape on the chin now these are a lot more stubborn they're red and they hurt they're puffy on the skin and they leave marks like like dark marks. there are a lot of different factors that can contribute to you having acne it can be through genetics now when we talk about genetics a lot of people get confused because genetically when somebody says it's based on genetics it's like oh my mom had it so I'm gonna have it but genetic really is a, a a overall umbrella term for habits right most families will eat the same type of food you pass down the same recipes so hereditarily most of you come out with the same diseases it's not because all of these diseases are passed down it's because the habits are passed down and habits eating certain things cause different effects in the body so if certain bloodlines follow certain patterns eating they're going to have the some of the same diseases another one is our diet and pregnancy but the number one cause is the antigen hormone now we talk about the different phases of the hair growth cycle all the time all right we talk about it all the time and this is where it matters so make sure you go watch my playlist because i don't just be trying to argue with y'all like it's complex now remember how i'm always telling you guys you do not need to oil your scalp your scalp does not need oil and all of that stuff it is for a reason so whenever the antigen hormone is activated within the body it releases or hormone Hormone, okay and that happens every month around your period if you are a biological woman these hormones stimulate oil production in the scalp and wherever the sebaceous glands are present on the body which we talk about here on my channel all the time you have sebaceous glands all over your body except for your elbows your knees and the soles of your feet but there are sebaceous glands everywhere including the scalp so around your period every month your scalp is really your body's releasing hormones that trigger oil and sebum production all over your body this is what leads to those breakout stuffs, blackheads, and all of those different things. And a lot of times, women who, uh, my clients that do have cerebral dermatitis, they will notice a great, great uptick always around the time of their period. Why is that? Cerebral dermatitis is an overproduction of sebum in the sebaceous gland. And on your period, no matter what, your body is releasing a hormone that triggers the sebaceous sebaceous gland to produce more sebum so when we're talking about cerebral dermatitis if you are a person who is constantly greasing your scalp and you always have oil and heavy thick butters on the scalp and then on your cycle the day of your cycle your body is going to start overproducing sebum what's going to happen you're going to experience burning and itching in your scalp and most of the time you won't really notice that it's happening around the same time every month Month. but in return instead of you going ahead and just tackling it uh, and shampooing your hair and keeping up with your same hair growth cycle that you could have learned in my seven day hair growth challenge join is still going on but 
if you keep up with a set pattern and a set routine, you'll know when your skin cell turnover week is. You'll know, you'll know when your skin cell turnover week is and when your body is releasing sebum throughout your cycle. So as a woman, as a biological woman, if you want to know when your body is releasing the most sebum, it is when you're on your cycle. So when you are on your period, that needs to be the time if no other time throughout the month that there is nothing on your scalp. Your skin needs to be clean, clear, and free. So many times here on my YouTube channel, people would ask questions or say things comparing themselves to women from other nationalities. Like, oh, well, Hindu women will put coconut oil on their hair and things of that nature, but they're not doing it every single day. And they're shampooing their hair when they do it. It's from a ritualistic standpoint. Like, there's certain patterns and routines. So, yeah, they might put it on their scalp, but they're shampooing their hair out every single day, not to mentioned their hair is of a different texture so the sebum is able to flow down their hair shaft and sebum is a thick waxy substance so if their hair is already covered in sebum the coconut oil is barely doing anything but the way that you guys do it you're putting coconut oil on your hair when your hair is wet and you're loading it up on top of each other day after day after day and then washing your hair after a couple of months after a couple of weeks or maybe just co-washing it so it's completely different all right i hope that makes sense when you are on your cycle your skin because you have sebaceous glands on your face and you have sebaceous glands on your scalp so your skin is releasing more sebum which in return will cause you to break out that's why like if you notice like if you are a person who sweats a lot or you have really oily skin the more oily your skin is or the thicker a product is the more oil concentration it has in it you'll notice if you're a person with oily skin like me you'll notice it will literally make your your skin break out why because your skin is automatically always releasing releasing sebum right so when we're talking about hormonal acne and seborrheic dermatitis there are a lot of like but there are differences right because when we're talking about hormonal acne it has a lot to do with your home the, the hormones and the antigens that you're releasing whereas seborrheic dermatitis a lot of time is self-inflicted if you talk to any dermatologist they'll tell you they don't know the direct causes to seborrheic dermatitis and when they say they don't know the direct causes that means that they have not been with the person long enough to collect a body of data enough to know what practices they're doing to actually cause it right but then if we're all in a, a room where we're 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 having a scientific conversation about a product which i do um they're gonna ask the professional cosmetologist depending on her amount of experience and the way that they you know respect her obviously they respect her if she in a room and they'll ask okay from your experience, right? From your over 40,000 clients that you've had experience with, what happens long term when used on the scalp? Because these are things that they're not really getting that type of information on most of the testing is done on animals and things of that nature so when when we sit down and have conversations these are the conversations that we have it's based on the data and the body of work based on experience you have a lot of different topical treatments that you can use that doctors do recommend or you can get um, a prescription written by a doctor depending on how far your hormonal acne is and how long it's gone i am not a dermatologist so i recommend that you guys go in to see your dermatologist if you do have hormonal acne just to see what your best plan of action may be because there are a lot of different options for you but a licensed dermatologist will be well equipped to tell you these are some of the oral medications that doctors prescribe to deal with hormonal acne all right and these act 
and uh, as an amazing way to block that hormone from taking from taking over right from sending so much uh so much sebum helping to make it so much of that sebum build up in the skin so even though we love our coconut oil and stuff coconut oil is highly comedogenic so if you have acne the last oil that you should be using on your scalp on your face is coconut oil i know you love coconut oil but guess Guess what there are hundreds and thousands of seeds and plants and all of them can be pressed into oils coconut oil is just one of many y'all can let it go birth control pills are normally prescribed to regulate like the hormonal flares and things of that nature that's why they prescribe the birth control because it'll control and limit the way that the body is releasing all of those hormones that are triggering the sebaceous gland to be to release more sebum so in return because that hormone won't be sending out that signal your face won't be breaking out sounds kind of scary but the way that it works it basically creates a protein that binds to the testosterone in the female body which in return prevents the body from building estrogen so that way you're not releasing those hormones because your body's not building up estrogen but a lot of women don't really like the way that the birth control makes them feel and it's not really worth it the way that their body feels from them just taking the birth control to release that hormone if you're pregnant of course if you have a history of smoking a history of breast cancer in your family 35 years or older and you're a smoker pregnant or if you have a history of high blood pressure and stroke this isn't really an option that you should take as it pertains to getting rid of hormonal acne on the other hand this one here is the first choice for dermatologists and after this then we're going to get into some of those herbal complexes that you can use spironolactone is something that dermatologists are freaking crazy about because so it is an anti-anogen that blocks the anogen receptors in the first place preventing them from triggering the sebaceous gland to build more sebum so this right here is something that dermatologists love because it's gonna be really hard for your face to break out if the hormones aren't able to send signals to each other so that is why this is like dermatologists first choice so I know you probably get tired of me talking about oil in the scalp and the body producing oil and things of that nature but i'm telling you your whole entire body is covered in sebaceous glands and when you grease the scalp you block those glands and when you block those glands they lead to so many other things so whenever people say like oh i don't have oil in my scalp or my scalp is dry or black women don't have oil it makes no sense whatsoever because you have oil glands over every inch of your body except for on the knees soles of your feet and elbows and the palms of your hands when you are stressed this is why we talk about telogen effluvium. When you're stressed, you send the body into telogen effluvium. Why is that? It's because the follicle is stressed. It's not just the fact that you're stressed. Whenever you get stressed, the body releases hormones that trigger the sebaceous gland every time. And when the sebaceous gland is triggered on multiple spots all over your head, your body goes into, it's like, okay, it's a lot happening right now. We're getting a lot of hormonal triggers. Let's go deep into this follicle and just sit here and rest until she figure out what she going through. Cause I don't know what's going on with her hormones and we not trying to be bald -headed. That's what goes on with telogen effluvium. So I want you to remember when we are talking about like oil and, and black women not producing oil it's crazy and the thing is they're not going to constantly argue with you because if you don't understand that you have oil glands all over the scalp you will never treat the real issue you will just be creating more of that problem and buying more of their products to fix a problem that they know you do not have i'm telling you when you're stressed it sends a hormone to your body that triggers all a hundred thousand of your follicles to release an uncontrollable amount of sebum within the follicle so when you feel your scalp itching the first thing you do is go and block the follicle even more and that is going to cause even more stress to the follicle so you'll notice you'll be having crazy flare-ups 
crazy flare-ups. This is why and eventually it'll end to balding because after so much chaos it, within the follicle, eventually once you keep packing oil on top of a follicle that's already blocked because seborrheic dermatitis has no other definition other than an overproduction of oil within the gland. So when you add more oil, you just add an over overproduction of more oil and the more clogged the follicle gets, it'll go from telogen effluvium to the canogen phase which then re results in you having certain forms of alopecia where you completely detach your hair follicle from the blood supply if you do not want to take over-the-counter medications there are two herbs that you can try Salt Plemento is freaking amazing for it as well as Spearmint. I want to talk to you about the newest blend from Simple Apothecary. By the time you see this video, I will have a name for this blend, but this blend is with crushed salt plemento, spearmint, and goji berries. Now, this herbal blend is absolutely amazing because DHT is when the body's level, because male and female, we have testosterone. So this goes for male and female. So this part is going to be good for biological women and non-biological women and men and whatever. Whoever, whatever you want to be. You want to be a giraffe in the morning, be a giraffe, whatever. Now the great thing about salt pimento, salt pimento is known to stop the party before it even gets started. So remember I said the, the testosterone in the human body converts and turns into DHT. Well, guess what? Salt Plemento, it stops that conversion altogether. It, it stops them from even linking together. It's like, no, you gonna say testosterone, mind your business. It inhibits enzyme 5 alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to DHT in the first place. So it doesn't even let the party start. By consuming this, Salt Plemento will stop the hormones in the body from releasing those hormones to build so much sebum within the follicle and when we're talking about seborrheic dermatitis when we're talking about seborrheic dermatitis when you have all of this overproduction of everything going on in the body what happens is it makes your body release all of these hormones that will cause the testosterone to convert and the follicles will be your body will will begin to attack the hair follicles. So salt pimento stops any of this from happening. Reducing your DHT levels within the body will greatly reduce the amount of cystic acne that you do have and it will release the amount of sebum being released within the sebaceous gland by reducing all of those hormones that are being released. Spearmint has gained so much popularity throughout studies on its anti-androgenetic abilities, which means it can stop the production of the androgen hormone in the body in general. So spearmint is amazing. So you won't have the androgen hormone and it's going to lower and inhibit the production of testosterone within your body. So you're not going to be losing hair as much. That burning, that itching, that tingling that you feel will go away. The last herb that is and this blend is goji berry. Goji berry is so amazing. It has so many antimicrobial. It's packed with vitamins and minerals that support healthy hair growth and healthy follicle function. Rich in antioxidants, especially vitamin C, which are amazing at helping to protect the follicles against oxidative stress. So all three of these together, listen. Not to mention, goji berries helps with the natural production of SIBO within the body. So. I know we already said one is an overproduction of sebum within the body if you have seborrheic dermatitis, but you are balancing everything out with the hormones. You're balancing everything out with your home with your hormones. So once you fix all of the other things on the back end, you're you're changing your habits because you've joined my seven day challenge or got one of my ebooks, right? And you're changing your habits and all of the different things that you do. And you're changing your diet. So you're different on the outside. Your routines and your habits have changed. Now you also need to make sure everything is regulated on the inside. Because when you're done having an over uh, 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 overproduction of hormones and things of that nature, you'll want to make sure that your sebum production stays at a healthy spot. 
because right now it's not balanced it's like all over the place and once you fix it you want to get your body back in a state where it's regular right so it also if you are a person who maybe don't have really really oily skin but you just need to regulate your sebum flow this blend is going to be freaking amazing for you so organic experiment saw pimento berries and a goji berries all right i am so freaking in love with this blend it is i don't want to say it's my favorite one because you can't have a favorite baby i got a bunch of babies in there but if you want to get your hands on some of it make sure you click the link in the description box below and get your hands on some of it now thank you guys so much for all of your orders for a simple apothecary all of everything is on the way and make sure you leave me some comments below to let me know to let me know what you want me to touch on more in this video i try to go over as much as i can without like overloading you with information but i'm pretty sure there's something within here within this video that you want me to go a little deeper into and i will because i know i didn't go deep enough into everything i just like scratched the surface of a lot of different things so upon watching this let me know in the comments are you a person who may be suffering from hormonal acne or are you a person who could possibly be suffering from seborrheic dermatitis and are you interested in trying some natural remedies at home make sure you check the links in the description box below for all of my testimonials on everything